Abani Gani, everyone. This is Professor Amin Ra, Professor Emeritus, California State University of Long Beach, former city councilman for the city of Compton, former uh, board of trustee member for Compton Unified uh, School District and Compton Community College. We want to welcome you to the Conscious Corner special edition for Thursday. And we have a very special guest, along with my co host, Brother Joe Hembrick, a uh, longtime educator from Linwood Unified School District and Compton Unified educator and administrator, as well as uh, developed the first multicultural uh, unity uh, uh, mural at Centennial High School that's still on the wall, and, and a serious historian with regards to our culture and our ancient culture and spirituality under the auspices of Maat and under the auspices of uh, just uh, ancient spirituality and, and things of this nature. We want to welcome him. And we also want to recognize Brother Rashiki Mascani, who is the uh, uh, person that provides us this platform under the Community Education Program for his work and his support in, in getting this platform to educate the people. And as we say in God, we either speak truth to first the people, then speak truth to power, and it's also speak truth to ourselves. We want to welcome the organization, us, all the Sabres, Sabre Tia Moya, as well as Sabre Tulivu, uh, as well as Dr. Hilebo Maulana Karenga, as well as Lynn Chimaji, and all the other members of the organization. Tonight, I think that's her, uh, Karenga, and yeah. all the rest of the uh, people that's on. And Sister yeah. Linda Shorter from Florida. We want to get started right away and, uh, and let Dr. Karenga give us the history and culture. But before I do that, I want to introduce him properly with regards to his compliment, Dr. Karenga. Is professor and chair of the Africana Studies Department at California State University of Long Beach. He's a director of the African American Culture Center, and he is the creator of Kwanzaa and author of the uh, uh, of the uh, main text, the number one text, Kwanzaa: A Celebration of Family, Community, and Culture, and Essays on Struggle is another one of his books, and many are Introduction to Black Studies. It's the number one book used in every department <coughs> that's teaching African studies in the country for the most part. We want to welcome also, as I said, the US organization. Uh, not only that, Dr. Karenga is the uh, co-chair of the, uh, the Los Angeles Black United Front called BCCLA, Black yeah. Unity Clergy and Labor Alliance, one of the premier organizations They've been meeting over 15 years or more with regards to uh, unifying us on all levels, clergy, labor, and community organizations, the uh, functioning Black United Front. And then as well as he is the uh, catalyst behind the Ethnic Studies Bill in California, along with Shirley Weber, that uh, makes every student in the Cal State system oh. take an ethnic, uh, uh, ethnic Studies class. We want to thank Dr. Karenga for taking out his busy schedule. Say, Asante, son, and many thanks for what he's doing tonight because this is his month, the Kwanzaa. He's, he's one of all over the country, and we know that Kwanzaa is a global dynamic now, and one is in every continent, and millions and millions of people are celebrating Kwanzaa. Tonight is Ujima, uh, Ujima. Ujima uh, uh, Collective Work and Responsibility Night, and that's how we greet each other. We first say Ujima Abani Gani, and then the response is Ujima Abani Gani back. We want to thank, again, everybody that's on, and then we want to also welcome the US organization. And I want to thank Dr. Crane and the US organization for being the premier organization of Black cultural uh, uh, nationalism as well as activism. When it came down to Hades, us was there, supporting 80s by gathering clothes, developing the alliance with our former advocate brother M. Penduzzi, who was our representative, and went to Haiti many times and brought back information. And we dealt, and when they come to uh, Los Angeles, they come to the Culture Center to speak. When we go to South Africa, we're helping Nelson Mandela in South Africa. Us was there, the organization Us was on the front line of that movement toward ending apartheid as far as uh, boycotting uh, South African uh, and, and all those movements, as well as 
of the uh, uh, Martin Luther King, saving Martin Luther King Hospital, the coalition that went up there to save it. They then reestablished it and created the atmosphere by which Mark Ridley Thomas could fight for it. Without that struggle, it wouldn't have happened. We also want to thank Dr. Uh, Dr. Kringer and the organization us for developing a coalition and an understanding and a relationship with the Korean community after uh, 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 for years, as well as working with the Brown Berets, the La uh, Latino organization. We want to thank the, the organization us was there and for supporting the Palestinian movement way before Gaza, way, way before Gaza in the many articles. Dr. Kringer have a a weekly article that I suggest everybody uh, uh, try to get the Sentinel. If you can't prescribe to it, try to get it because he has a weekly article. I don't know how he pumps them articles out, <laughs> but they, they are beautiful. But he gets them out every week and we read them uh, at the African-American uh, study group on the Nchinga Onofi uh, out of Houston. We meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. to study. I'm a student of Kawaita. And I practice it. And I just want to say, Asante to Maulana for all he's done for us. Asante Maulana, you can take it over now. Such an honor to you, Professor Ryan. I want to thank Professor Ryan equal measure. Uh, he's a good friend uh, and um, an excellent friend, not just good, an excellent friend. And uh, I owe my teaching career to him at Long Beach on that. Uh, he fought for me seven years to get back there. Uh, the uh, uh, dean had said I was too big for the uh, the campus, you know, <laughs> and uh, they kind of kept me away. But Professor Rye worked seven long years to get me back then. I I was I was glad. I used to teach part time when I first came there, but uh, when I came back, I came back as chair, and in less <laughs> than a year, I had full professorship. So I always praise Professor Rye. I praise him for all the work he did for his students. Uh, and then, you know, this is Kwanzaa. You might not think this is Kwanzaa, but it is because during Kwanzaa time, we have to reaffirm blackness. But Kwanzaa is a time of celebration of blackness, you know, of black people, of the sacredness, soulfulness, resilience, and resourcefulness of our people. And so what we are doing here is just telling a narrative that reaffirm, from, for, reaffirms that. And that's what we should be doing. And I was just saying about Professor Rod being involved in struggles even as he said that, you know, the Ron Settle case, the police uh, brutality and police violence, right? But all the other movements that he talked about I was in, uh, he was also in. And so I don't want to spend much more time on that because I know you came to hear a lot about Kwanzaa itself and the origin of the history. So uh, that's what I, I, I would I talk to you about. So Professor Rye, you want this to be a conversation or you want me to make a statement and then uh, let's uh, open it up for conversation. The way you the way you feel comfortable, my uh, able appreciate what you said and what you asked. Uh, if I understand it correctly, Yabo. However, you want to do it. You want to make a statement. I I'd like for you to go over those the, the, that article, your recent okay. article on Kwanzaa, especially the part uh, uh, that you know I, I really enjoy. It's an act of blackness. <laughs> you know, a celebration of black a blackness, a celebration of uh, 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 I, I got them written down, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so let me just go over this and say to you, um, Habadi Ghani to everybody. Habadi Ghani is uh, sanctioned for that, Professor. Uh, Habadi Ghani uh, is uh, the greeting that we have all the time, but it's also, um, <clears throat> you know, the greeting we use during uh, Kwanzaa. And what we do is we greet each other, Habari Ghani, but instead of saying in Jema, which is a common way of saying it, then we at the same time uh, say um, Umoja for the first day and then go all the way down to principle. So that's, that's how we say it. So I would, just, just to get us a chance to participate, uh, can we do that? Uh, yeah, no. and also, um, can, uh, I wanted to be able to see my audience so I can see it. If, if I can do that, and then we can go come back to the pictures, that would be good. Because I like I like to see them that enter that. But aside to for showing that, uh, I think that's important. And we'd like to invite y'all to go to the official Kwanzaa website dot org, uh, from which um, uh, Rash, uh, Rashiki was uh, doing those um, uh, presentations. 
Rashid. Right. Say your name, Brother Rashid, so I can say it right. Rashak. Masaki. Maskani. Rashkai. Masaki. Silent H. Silent Rashaki. Rashaki. Maskani. Yes, sir. Rashaki. Maskani. Sansa Sana. I appreciate that, Rashaki. Rashaki, thanks so much for that. Thank, thanks for all your help in this. So, again, uh, oh, someone going to say something? Oh. So, I would just want to start off by saying, as I always do, that the, again, this year, all over the world, on every continent doing, uh, in the world, African people are celebrating themselves. And I wish for Africans everywhere, throughout the world African community, happy Kwanzaa. Head is our Kwanzaa in Swahili, right? And we bring and sing greetings of celebration, solidarity, and continuous struggle for an inclusive and shared good in the world. And also, we wish for African peoples and the peoples of the world in our traditional Kwanzaa way. We wish for you all the good that heaven grants, the earth produces, and the waters bring forth uh, from their depths. And so I want to see that this time I, I stress a certain theme. Every year, as founder of the, uh, the holiday Kwanzaa, I put forth a theme. And this year's theme is Kwanzaa Freedom, Justice, and Peace. Principles and Practices for a New World. What will a new world look like? And how do we achieve it, right? And so that's what we're talking about. And we live in turbulent times, you know, where people are being killed, where we have continuing unfreedom and oppression, enduring uh, injustice, uh, and um, also un uh, destructive conflicts and unjust and even genocidal war, right? And we have to, as our texts tell us, not turn a blind eye to that or a deaf ear to what the suffering of people. We must bear witness to truth and set the scales of justice in a proper place among those who have no voice. And that is the voiceless, the downtrodden, the devalued, right? The dispossessed, uh, the oppressed, the different and the vulnerable. And that's one of our main ethical positions from our ancient uh, tradition. Nana Haji Malcolm rightly and repeatedly taught that we must have freedom. So when we talk about freedom, crimes of freedom, justice, and <clears throat> peace, we talk about three things that are essential during this time. We first need freedom because as Haji Malcolm said to us, without freedom, we can't have anything else, right? We have to have freedom first. He rightly uh, repeatedly taught that freedom is a natural and necessary right uh, in the pursuit and practice of justice, equality, the rightful realization of our own humanity and living out a good, meaningful, and ever promising life. So freedom is essential, he said. Without freedom, we can't even talk about justice and equality, right? Or none of the other goods. And freedom is a natural right. It's not a civil right. It's a natural right, a God-given right, he says. And then the justice issue. Our, our ancestors in um, the Nile Valley in the sacred text of Husea says, justice is essential to life also, right? It's, they say, quote, doing justice is breath to the nose. In fact, they say the true balancing of the whole world lies in people doing justice. And what is doing justice? It is giving each other their due. And the first thing do you is respect for you as a bearer of dignity and divinity. And that's a concept that we uh, introduced to the world too. We said that humans have a special status in the world. We're the earliest people to say that and our sacred text. We said they are bearers of dignity and divinity. They're in the image of God. Sin and nature is the Egyptian words, right? In the image of the divine and therefore deserve a special status. And some there are certain things we shouldn't do to ourselves nor allow others to do <laughs> For fear, for fear of violating that status, maybe we need to. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so, so. Um, if everybody put on mute, then uh, Dr. Jarena will come off mute when he take questions and answers. Put your phone, put your Zoom on mute. 
Because we can hear papers, we can hear everything. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 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 we said that they had the special status, right? Uh, and that we should not do certain things to ourselves, nor allow others to do it for fear of violating uh, that status, right? Yes, sir. And then we taught that we no. are bears of dignity. That is to say, yeah, that is to say that uh, we have an inherent worthiness that we're born with, right? Uh, that it is, um, it's called shit. Just a minute, my, my uh, Reggie, you know, would, you, would you put your uh, uh, Zoom on mute, Reggie? Oh, Reggie Muhammad, would you put your zoom? There it is. Okay, go ahead, Mahalan. Jay Bo. So, mm -hmm. so, so we have, we have, um, yeah. I'm sorry, Mahalan. No, 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 that's all right. So, so we need justice and we, and we are bearers of dignity and divinity. And that's dignity I was talking about. This inherent wordness. You can't even have human rights without the concept of humans as having an inherent wordness that is transcendent of all social and biological categories like race and class and gender and sexuality and ability and age, and, and age right? And then that is, is equal in all, that everybody is equal worth. There's no superior or inferior people. There's one, no one more chosen than us or anybody else. And finally, that is inalienable. Nobody can take it from you and you can't give it away because it's in you. You are born in freedom. You're born in dignity. You're born with dignity and divinity. And you have to defend that, right? That's what we taught the world. Later on, people said similar thing, but it's African people who stood up first, spoke the first human truth, introduced some of the basic disciplines of human knowledge in the Nile Valley, and taught the world what was good and beautiful. And so we have to always remember that. And when Kwanzaa tells us to do this, you know, Kwanzaa was created, you know, in the 1960s, in the midst of the Black Freedom Movement. You know, I was in, when I, when I came out of, uh, I was in, uh, UCLA, I was in school, in grad school, working on my doctorate. But I wanted to join the movement, right? I wanted to contribute to the liberation of our people. And we were in the uh, second stage of the Black Freedom Movement. The first stage was the Civil Rights Movement. The second was the Black Power uh, Movement. These were different phases inside the overall Black Freedom Movement. And we said that, you know, some of us are going to stay in, but we some of us need to get out and work in the community and work uh, for the liberation of Black people. And that struggle was always two things, a struggle to be ourselves and to free ourselves, to be ourselves without penalty, punishment, or oppression, and to free ourselves from domination, deprivation, and degradation by the oppressor. And so I created Kwanzaa in that context, and I created Kwanzaa then for these reasons. Number one, to contribute to the advancement of the Black freedom movement. If people don't put freedom at the center of Kwanzaa, they're not doing what they should do. It's along with other things I'm going to talk to you about, but it's there at the beginning, right? And so I created Kwanzaa uh, to contribute to that movement. So I conceived of it and put it forth as one, an act of freedom. Second, as an instrument of freedom. Third, as a celebration of freedom. And fourth, as a practice of freedom. It's an act of freedom in that we didn't ask the white man or anybody to accept it or make it a national holiday. We made it an international holiday, not by appealing to the media, not by appealing to the dominant society, but by practicing it, by teaching it and showing its value. And Black people, and I'm always grateful to them, and always praise Black people, took it to themselves and made it an international holiday that it was designed to be a pan-African holiday for the liberation of African people and the good of African people everywhere. Second, I created Kwanzaa to return us to our history and culture because we had been lifted out of our own history and culture and made a footnote forgotten casualty in other people's history and culture through the Holocaust of enslavement, through the savagery of segregation and the continuous systemic racism, right? That was very difficult on us, as you know, right? And so it was important for us to get back to the best of our values. Haji Malcolm, when I say Nana Haji Malcolm, when I use the word Nana, it means honored one, right? And so Nana uh, uh, Haji Malcolm had taught us that we need a cultural revolution, right? We need a cultural revolution. And that is to free our minds and hearts, right? And he said, unless we have a cultural revolution and recapture our history and culture, right? 
and the consciousness and will to struggle with that. We will never break his words, the bonds of white supremacy. We can't do it. We've got to root ourselves in our culture. And even if you don't go back to Africa, he said, physically, you need to go back culturally and spiritually and psychologically so that you can ground yourself. Because the white man, the oppressor, had problematized us, he said. And he said, made us hate ourselves. I'm going to say problematized ourselves from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, right? Made you look at your nose funny, your hair funny. Start with your hair, okay, first, right? And then your nose and your lips and your legs and your genitals and your feet. He had something to say about all of that. Rescue me if I'm wrong. And the question was, how do we break the monopoly that the oppressor has on our mind? And so Kwanzaa became then an instrument of freedom to free the mind, to free the heart, to cultivate consciousness and commitment and the will to struggle to be free. And third, Kwanzaa was also a celebration of freedom, a celebration of our black selves, re-understood, not small-minded people and ghettoized people, but people who saw themselves in world historical terms, right? Who saw themselves as fathers and mothers of humanity and human civilization, who saw themselves as a uh, uh, sons and daughters of the Holocaust of enslavement and with a deep investment in the will to be free and expand the realm of he human freedom, not only in this country, but indeed in the world. And it was a celebration of ourselves in that. We were celebrating the newly remembered, the newly recaptured, the newly regained sense of ourselves as sacred, as soulful, as resilient, as resourceful, as capable of actually making a new future for ourselves. That was the beauty of the movement, rescuing me if I'm wrong. And our philosophy, Kawaiina, contributed to that, along with all the other philosophers out there. They said, black to black, liberation is coming from a black thing. And I always have to give the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his best students, his major student, his star student, Ahaji Malcolm, for opening up our minds. Imagine where we would be without the teachings of the Nation of Islam on blackness. They de they demonized blackness. They sacralized blackness in a whole different kind of way. And it laid the basis for us to begin to develop it in a lot of ways, right? So always give praise, right? And then second, um, I mean, the, the fourth, um, the, it was a practice of freedom. Black people say, you know, we need to practice Kwanzaa all year round. We don't necessarily need, they're right. But if you practice the principles, then Guzo Saba, the seven principles, then you practice it. So now I've spent, I have four reasons for creating Kwanzaa. I like spent the first time on the first reason, which is to contribute to, uh, guess what? The, the, the liberation movement. But the second reason I uh, did Kwanzaa, as I said, was to hmm, recover, uh, we, ah, reaffirm our rootedness in African culture. The third reason I created Kwanzaa was to give us a time as African people, as black people, to come together and reaffirm the bonds between us and meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. What does it mean, we always ask, to be the fathers and mothers of humanity and human civilization? What kind of obligation does that have on us to continue to struggle, to keep the faith and to hold the line? What does it mean to be the sons and daughters of the Holocaust of, 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 of enslavement? Doesn't that give us a special relationship to the fight for freedom all over the world? Aren't we the moral vanguard that stands up and say liberation for African people everywhere, but also liberation for the world? Because it's not also just the liberation of humanity. It's the liberation of the environment itself, the earth itself, from corporate and capitalist mutilation, plunder, pollution, and depletion. Rescue me if I'm wrong, right? And if we don't speak that special trouble, culture to who will? We have a saying in us, we say, if not this, then what? And if we don't do it, who will? If not this, if not this righteous position in defense of African and human good and the well-being of the world, what then? If not this, then what? And if we don't do it, who will, right? And then, then um, uh, not only did we 
I created Kwanzaa, uh, Kwanzaa uh, to um, contribute to the struggle, to reaffirm my rootedness in African culture, but also to give us this time, as I said, to sit down and meditate. Now, all over the world, all over the world, Black people, on every continent in the world. And I'll, I maybe I'll, I'll just take some time if, if uh, Russia Keith will give me access. I'll, I'm going to show you some of the places that Kwanzaa uh, is uh, celebrated after I finish this, right? And just think about that. We started here in L.A., right? Okay. And went all over the world. Rashiki, can you mute them? Eva, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. All over the world, right? And that's a beautiful thing to do that. And I just want to show you that in a minute. And then the last re reason I created Kwanzaa was to introduce the communal values that I saw was the key to our liberation, to our building community, and the new world we all want and deserve to live in. <clears throat> and when I say communitarian value, I mean values that stress community, that stress family, community, and culture. And that's what Kwanzaa is, a celebration of family, community, and culture, right? And that the hub and hinge on which this whole holiday turned are the communal values of Kwanzaa and Kawita philosophy, my philosophy, right? And those are first in Swahili and then in English, Umoja, unity, Kujichagilia, self-determination, Ujima, collective working responsibility, Ujima, cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, Kumba, creativity, and Imani, faith, right? So let me just show you how many, uh, uh, so many places, uh, if I can do this. Mm. Oh, I see I'm happy. Just one moment. I'll go back to it. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Oh, I always do that. I don't know why I keep doing that. I know not to do that, but I keep doing it. You know how people go by habit, right? So look at these places, North America, right? Africa, the North America, United States, all the way up in Canada and Nunavut, which is the Inuit land, uh, what the people used to call Eskimos, right? The in Inuit, and the Afro Inuit, but there's also Africans living up in there, right? And they celebrate, and this is a picture of, of their uh, symbol. Here's another symbol, Africa and Cameroon. South Africa have large and, and many cities in uh, uh, South Africa uh, celebrate. In the Caribbean, you know, these islands of Curaçao, Guadalupe, Martinique, and of course, Jamaica. South America, <clears throat> Peru and <clears throat> Ecuador, <clears throat> Brazil, uh, and in Asia, his uh, Korea, you know, uh, and and Japan and China, and in Europe, you have here uh, in England, in France, in Norway, in Austria, and just so many places where Black people are, they all celebrate that. And I just want to say to you, head is our Kwanzaa, and I say to all Africans everywhere, right? We wish for you. All the good that heaven grants, the earth produces, and the waters bring forth from their depths. And so I just, I just wanted to show you the different places, and I show you many more pictures of how Africans. And a lot of times, the dominant society always says, "Oh, Kwanzaa is not populist. Not, only a few people." That's not even real. It's millions of people throughout the world, African community that celebrate this every year. And so the hub and hinge on which everything turns or the seven principles. And I want to just stop here and let you ask me some more questions about the origins, because I don't want to lecture. I want to have a conversation, but I just laid the basis for us to talk about this world historical. I created in 1966, and it grew from uh, the organization Us, which was the context in which I created and got the support 
uh, for it. And now it is on every continent in the world, throughout the world African community. And black people use it to do so many things, but it first and foremost, to ground themselves, to orient themselves, and to direct their lives toward good and expansive end. But they also use the principles like Umoja and Nia and all those uh, Imani, the use of, to name their children and themselves, to name their organization, to develop their programs and projects. They use them, right? So they use Kawita philosophy out of which I created both Kwanzaa and the Nguzo Saba. So I want to just open it up now. Has been really consistent. Uh, and it's just, there is a disconnect. Okay, and... Abani Ghani, Abani Ghani, everyone. Again, we want to say Asante Sanders to Dr. Karanga for that excellent presentation. Just give you a hand. And then Thank second, I want, uh, uh, before before we get to question and answer, I just want to recognize okay. our our uh, members of our team that be on our uh, podcast, Zoom podcast. I want to start with uh, Brother Rashiki Mascani, who is the creator of our, our, our podcast, Community Education Network, that's on every Wednesday, uh, and I'm on every Tuesday uh, 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 with regards to Conscious Corner. We want to also recognize Linda Shorter, who's a curator of a virtual, a virtual museum and a, 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 a research a, a person that helps us get other guest speakers. I want to recognize she's out of Florida, along with Tiz Jones, who's the author of poems and uh, 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 a chaplain that goes to the prisons and speaks uh, mm -hmm. throughout Florida. I want to recognize uh, 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 brother uh, Dr. Charles Alexander out of Chicago, who's a strong uh, uh, a person. Uh, I know all of the brothers in Chicago, hockey, uh, uh, all the brothers, the, uh, he works hard. He was on with us last night, as, as well as brother uh, uh, Ronnie Roberts out of Oklahoma, who do up presentations on our show, as well as uh, as a teammate, uh, team member. Mm -hmm. um, she, uh, as I already mentioned Joe Hembrick, brother Shawara uh, 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 Ogozi out of, uh, uh, I think, was he Atlanta? Atlanta. Ogo yeah, Atlanta, yeah. And uh, so we thank him, Rasta Man, as he said. He's not a Rasta Ferret, he's a Rasta Man. And so we appreciate that teaching. Second, we want to also recognize Dr. Rose uh, Allen, who's a former student, former president of the Black Study Student Association. She's in Denver, and she's uh, got a, a, a national recognized uh, uh, White House uh, award given uh, a, a nonprofit that goes around and educate uh, in, individuals about suspensions of black students and students and, and just doing a great job out there in Denver along with uh, uh, who, who else, uh, Brother uh, Rashiki, that I didn't mention? Uh, brother DX is here. Yeah, Brother DX, Brother DX. Uh, he's out of Atlanta too. An mm -hmm. entrepreneur, strong brother in spirituality and consciousness and uh, he was uh, 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 gave a lecture the other day. So right now we're going to give some questions and answers. You can unmute yourself and let Dr. Karenga answer any questions that you may have about Kwanzaa that you may be looking for. I want to also recognize uh, a brother Duran, who's uh, a, a Rudolph, a false Rudolph, who's uh, I went to Africa, stayed a month or more, and brought me back a beautiful dashiki. And he's a one beautiful brother that uh, works in the Los Angeles area for the betterment of black people, along with my son, Shahid Ma, Shahid Ra, Amin Ra, they're on in, in Coomba. Uh, uh, they're all on the show tonight. So we want to thank, thank everybody for coming, but this is a time for you to really ask a question about Kwanzaa, if you choose to, uh, or that you need clarification on. You have the creator of it. This is not no, none <laughs> of So, uh, Anybody want to start? Okay, so Professor Rod, since we have we have 33 people here. Yeah. So Wanna go in some type of order then? Well, no, uh, no, whoever uh uh I'll I can call on some people and see see if they if they have anything to say. Dr. Right. Allen, do you have a question? Uh, greetings to Dr. Karang or anything? Come off mute. Young mute. Yeah. I will. 
That's Dr. Chihuahua. Ray, it's question. just an, oh. an honor to be here. I mean, sitting at your feet way back in 1980, 1981 at CSU. Good to see you, Rosemary. Good to see you, Dr. Allen. So <laughs> good to see you. And just knowing that the legacy that you built still lives on everywhere we go. Every mm -hmm. life we touch is because, because you've touched us. So I just want to thank you. I don't have any questions, but it's just an honor to be here and to see you. Right. Yeah, honored to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 all right, uh, uh, brother. Uh, Chihuahua. Huh? Chihuahua in the corner here. At the okay. Uh, yeah. Chihuahua. Go ahead. You got to unmute. My aunt sent me. Yes. Uh, good mm -hmm. greetings and uh, salutations. Greetings. You know, salutations. Uh, my name. Happy Quad. Happy and blessed guidance and all of the good vibrations that come from our ancient of ancient of ancient of eons and eons of ancestors. Um, I have to ask, I got three questions to ask you. The first one would be concerning a calendar. Have you ever thought about um, putting together a calendar that would run throughout the year that would um, enforce or help us to kind of pull us away from these things that they do to us throughout the year to come down into the quans as our main thing? That's the first question. The, 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 the second question would be, um, I believe you mentioned like Kawida philosophy. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that before. So could you explain some of that to me, please? Mm -hmm. um, and the final question, when I, you know, I've known about you for years. I, I have my, you know, my Kwanzaa um, altar and everything, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I don't practice it as in a ceremonial sense like I used to while I was down in South Florida, but I keep, that's what I do every year. Um, when the, the first time I began to research you per se directly was, um, when I found out you were going to be on the show. And as I were looking into the Kwanzaa and I uh, was asked to also do a presentation at one of my grandchildren's school, I, I ran up on something where they, they you know, the, the, the resources were mentioned some kind of conflict between the US organization and Black Panther. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to, if you will, um, just kind of Give me an understanding of, of what that was about. It doesn't have to be in detail. Just just give me a brief understanding, you know, of what that would, might have been about. And mm -hmm. that'll be it. Yeah, well, appreciate what you said, if I understand correctly. Uh, I'm going to answer these questions, but I really want us to talk about Kwanzaa this evening. And okay. I want us to make sure we ask some Ooh. questions about it. Because a lot of times people say they practice it, but I want to know how you practice it. And Maybe you could tell me if you practice it, what you do. And then well, I can tell you. I'm not talking about you, Chihuahua. I'm going to answer your question. I'm just okay. talking about the people in general. You know I'm going to okay. answer your question. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, not answer your questions. I think your questions are important, right? So in, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say this in terms of laying the groundwork for what we're doing here. We have to talk about Kwanzaa because sometimes we have... This other kind of conversation we can have, I, I want Professor Rod to bring me back and I just talk straight out politics and struggle and fighting. I'm going to talk about struggle here because it's born in struggle. You know that. Yeah. But I, I, I would like to be on a place where people ask me about the color, the lightning of the candle. What does that mean? Why do we do that, right? What about the symbols? What do they mean? Those kinds of things, right? And it's just... It's just a time to do this. I want us to talk a different way because otherwise we end up talking pathology about what black people don't do, what they've been doing and ain't doing right. I want us to praise ourselves. And one of the things that I learned, you know, if the white man attacks us and uh, destroys us and everybody else think we're gone, who's left to defend us and to talk about the beauty and sacredness and divinity of being black. Who, do, who Who's left to do that? So I'm just asking you to reframe your thinking 
long enough to either praise some black person you know or to ask something that helps you understand life better and to structure your life in dignity affirming, life enhancing and world preserving ways. That's what it's all about, you know, to do what is dignity affirming, what affirms, affirms your dignity, to do what is life enhancing, that contributes to the flourishing of your life so that you can develop and think and grow and come into the fullness of yourself. And then world preserving, being concerned as Kwanzaa is about the earth itself. Uh, again, the messenger said, we want a new earth and a new us, right? I'm not a Muslim. I'm just giving credit to people that I know did something. I'm going to quote Ma Haji Malcolm. I'm going to quote uh, uh, Nana, uh, Elijah Muhammad. I'm going to quote Nana Mir McClavethun, Nana Fanny Luhayma. I'm going to go through all of them, right? But I want you to see that what they all wanted us to do was to turn inward and see ourselves. And the second important thing I stress when I got on here about Kwanzaa, why I created, to give us a time when we could go back to black, think beautiful, think deep, think in loving kindness. That's what I want. So let me tell you, uh, answer, uh, Brother Chihuahua, and thanks again, Brother Chihuahua, for the question. Number one, no, I didn't think about doing a calendar, but I think if somebody feels that's a good thing, I think they, they should do that. I think it's important. Kawit is my philosophy. I created uh, my philosophy. I developed it while I was in grad school and further developed it when I got out. And it is the source of both Kwanzaa uh, uh, hmm, Saba and Kwanzaa. I created Kwanzaa and then Guzo Saba out of my philosophy, Kawaita. I first created then Guzo Saba. Then I created Kwanzaa as a way to teach those in Guzo Saba, those seven principles and all the related values, right? Because what I wanted to do was to ground people again in the best of our culture, ancient and modern, continental African, but also diaspora African. That is uh, all the all the peoples outside of Africa, all the black people outside of Africa got a special culture truth to speak, right? And I wanted them to recognize themselves in beautiful ways that we're talking about now. That's what I wanted to do. And that's what has happened all over the world. So I want us to recognize that and I want us to talk to beautiful things about black people. That's, that's it. Now, the last thing is about the conflict with the Panthers. As you know, there's several sources to that. You know, this conflict happened in the context of the Black Freedom Movement. And when both of us were claiming to be the most revolutionary, all of us are revolutionary. Now, people now try to make a distinction between revolutionary nationalism and cultural nationalism, but we were revolutionary cultural nationalism. The other people, Panthers would be called revolutionary political nationalism. But sometimes people get culture mixed up and they think culture is singing and dancing, but no. In fact, as Nana Sekou Ture said, and Nana Amilcar Cabral reaffirmed, the liberation struggle itself is an expression of culture. Why? Because it's culture that either cultivates in you the will to struggle and to make revolution, or it teaches you to be passive. It teaches you to betray yourself in silence or in action, in, in, in non-action, I should say. In action, I mean non-action. There's two ways of saying it. So I, I just think it's important for us to understand. And when I talk about culture, I'm talking about something wider. I'm talking about the totality of sensibilities, thought, and practice by which a people creates itself, celebrates, sustains, and develops itself, and introduces itself to history and humanity. And that occurs on seven basic levels of religion or his, uh, spirituality and ethics, right? Number one. Number two, <clears throat> uh, history. Next, a social organization, political organization creative production, which is your art, music, literature, and finally, ethos, the collective psychology you get as a result of practice in those other six areas. So when I talk about culture, I'm talking something serious. And when I talk about culture nationalism, I'm talking about revolutionary culture nationalism, Kawita culture nationalism, which is based on three fundamental propositions. And we argued about this. Number one, we said that the defining feature of any culture, pardon me, the defining feature of any people or nation is its culture. That for people to, second, 
for people to be itself and free itself, it must be self-conscious, self-determining, and rooted in its own culture. And third proposition of culture nationalism is that the quality of life of a people and the success of its liberation struggle depends upon it waging cultural revolution within and political revolution without resulting in the radical reconstruction of self and the radical uh, transformation of self, society, and the world. So we want to change the world as we change ourselves. We can't have a new world if we don't have a new us. And the new us must think in different ways, right? And must break the, uh, the psychological chains that the press has put around our mind. Break the umbilical cord that he still tries to hold us to him and begin to think in new ways, dignity affirming ways, as I said, right? Life enhancing way and world preserving way. So we, we had these ideological struggles, but they turned different. And we began to criticize each other in bad ways. And I, we, never, we never did in the public, we never called the Panthers name. But what happened is when they, we got to arguing about bringing white people back into the movement, we said, no, we have to practice self-determination. SNCC put the white people out. Uh, CORE put the white people out. We never had them in, but we thought that was an important thing. The black power meant self-determination. The Panthers had brought them back in and movement and a lot of things. I don't want to put the Panthers down because we've signed a reconciliation movement and trying to get past that. But the key factor was, even after all that, was the police, the COINTELPRO. The COINTELPRO, as you know, J. Edgar Hoover was afraid of the black power movement. Now, a lot of times people want to say it's just the Panthers. That's not real. They were more afraid of the nation than they were the Panthers. The first target of the COINTELPRO, as you know, was the Nation of Islam and the division between the Messenger and Malcolm. Or I should say Nana Messenger Muhammad and Nana uh, Malcolm X, right? So uh, we got to be. Uh, we were also uh, um, attacked and victims of the COINTELPRO. We, our people were put in, including myself, put in captivity on trumped up charges, driven underground. And some of our people still in exile in other countries, right? Because of what the white man did to all of us. And we tried to get it straight, but we were not able to do that. And then we had a shootout and, you know, they shot at us, said it was the Panthers, shot at the Panthers, said it was us. And but, So I, I hope we finish with that because that's for another conversation. And I would love, Professor Rye worked on this, right? We've signed this, with, and I want to give, right now, I want to give uh, Brother Henry Wallace of the original San Diego Black Panther Party chapter. I want to give him credit for working with me and us developing, our organization developing a reconciliation statement and recognizing the role the police, the COINTELPRO, had in dividing us and having us uh, uh, to... Uh, go to that uh, deadly conflict. So that's that's something we have to get over. If we don't get over it, uh, we're never be really able to build a new um, unified liberation movement. So I think we took a step and it's a model for everybody else to do similar. So that's it. And thanks for the question, Brother Chihuahua. Someone else has a hand up. Uh, that was uh, Rudolph. Rudolph and then uh, Saber Tulivo. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Hassani Jumala. Hassani, okay, good. Yes, uh, Brother Rudolph. Rudolph. Hi, Doctor Karinga. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I just want to tell you, a immense privilege it is to meet you. Um, you've been such a significant uh, journey as far as like learning about empowerment, as far as what it means to be a black woman and healing to my family. So my family has been very like um, immersed in religion. Right. And I really went on this journey in college to figure out what it means to be a black woman. I was having like a really hard time reaching my parents and talking with them about it. And then just by chance, I mentioned Kwanzaa and my dad actually was a college student of yours. Mm. And he really like sourced pride from that. We were able to use kind of like the principles of Kwanzaa to really like bridge that gap. So I really, really appreciate it. It's super amazing to meet you. Um, my you question. That and sharing yes. that. That's the yes. kind of narrative we need to reinforce 
you know, the bonds between us and the show, how we can work out things with love and kindness. We can do that. Okay. But please go on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I, my question is, is, um, of course, all the days are super amazing, but I would say like, um, my question is what's the most impactful day or two days that you would say as far as like really meeting with family, having very serious conversations and even like engaging with the community? And meeting with who? Meeting with the community or with family, like what are the days, like if two days were like the best for really engaging and talking to people that aren't so open, what days would you suggest for that? Or even for like really deep self-reflection. You mean doing Kwanzaa? Yes. 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 Like the two days. The day, the day we set aside for that is the last day, January 1st. It's called mm -hmm. the day of meditation. Uh, that's Siku uh, Yak Tamuli. You don't know it have to memorize the Swahili. Just know that it's a day of meditation. And in that day, after all the celebration, after all the narratives, is all all the you know practices we go through, it's good at the end of the year and the beginning of the year to sit down, right? Meditate on the awesome meaning of being African in the world. Sit down and Ask yourself, where do you stand? Who are you, right? We say that three fundamental questions you have to do. You measure, you sit down, you measure yourself in the mirror of the best of our culture and history. Again, sitting down, meditating, reflecting, thinking, discussing, and asking ourselves, right, where we are and who we are. And you know, that's why I put Kwanzaa at the end of the year, right? One of the reasons to get away from all that other thing that was going on, the consumerism and everything, but it was a special time for Africans, right? When it's the time that I can call the time when the edges of the year meet and time when we sort of think deeply about where we've been and where we're going. And if we sit down, and measure ourselves in the mirror of the best of our culture and ask ourselves, where do we stand? We've got a good future we can build. And in order to measure ourselves, right, in the mirror of the best of our culture, then we have to ask ourselves and answer three questions. One, who am I? Here's a Kawaita question. Who am I? Second, am I really who I am? And third, am I all I ought to be? Who am I? Not who's on your license, right? Or on your bills. The question is, who are you? Are you a man among men and a man among women? Are you a woman among women and a woman among men? Where do you stand in relationship to your community and what you've done to serve? Because the greatness of anybody is how much they serve other people. And to serve your community at the best you can must be your ultimate goal. All right, so where do you stand? Who am I? When people think of you, when the world puts you down on a piece of paper and asks, who is this person? They will not want to know what you've done, not just your name, but what you've done. And we get our name by what we've done. Second question, am I really who I am? Not a fan for no one said we wear the mask that the European forces us sometimes to discolor ourselves. And he has a book called uh, Black Skin, White Mask, right? We're trying to get along. We don't want to be penalized for being black in a white racist society. So sometimes we doubt ourselves. We deny ourselves. We condemn ourselves. And then finally we mutilate ourselves both psychologically and physically, right? Just think about it. And so what we have to do is ask, am I doing that? Am I wearing the mask or am I who I ought to be? Remember what I told you the freedom struggle was about is to free ourselves and to liberate ourselves, to free ourselves and be ourselves, right? So we have to free ourselves from those distorted uh, conceptions that the dominant society imposes on us. And then finally, am I all I ought to be? Mean, are you excellent? If African means anything, Black people, it must mean excellence. And the question is, are you settling for a C or do you want to do the A? 
Do all you settling for just being ordinary, trying to get along? How hard do you want to make an important contribution to your people? Not to please the oppressor. Who is this guy anyhow, right? The question is, what do you think about yourself? And what do the people that love you and respect you think about you? And you give the best of what you can. Serve the people, love the people, right? And learn, learn how to hmm, relate rightfully to each other and to the world. That's so important for us as Africans. The hub and hinge on which everything turns in human life is human relationship. Have bad relationship, you got a bad life. Have good relationship, there's no telling what you can do. Dare struggle, dare achieve. Be a good person in the world. We always say that there are four things that we say for our saber mind, our moral teachers in our organization. We say these are four commitments you have to make. And I think they apply to everybody in the final analysis. We just have to be even more stringent in them. And the first one is to be a good person in the world. Next, to be a, cons a consistent servant of the people. To be a continuing student. Ah, I'm sorry. To be a good person in the world, right? That's the first thing. To be a consistent servant of the people. To be a constant soldier in the struggle. To be a continuous student of the teachings of our ancestors. And finally, to be a tireless teacher of the good, the right, and the possible. Live the goodness that you want. Live it. Live it in your relationships with each other and the world. You're beautiful people, soulful people, sacred people. There's no one more sacred than you, no one more chosen than you. Step forward and shine, Black people. Be radiant. I want to end by saying, because I know we're out of time, I want to end with the three major... I do, we're out of time, aren't we, Professor Ra? Go as uh -huh. long as you want. Right. <laughs> okay. Go as long then, as you want. Okay. <laughs> then I'll, I'll save my ending uh, for that. But let, no, let me just add it, because... Uh, our sister said, uh, raised this question. So think about these three things when we think about how we engage our community and the beautiful and sacredness of it. I, I use three major ancestors to do this. Nana Harry, pardon me, Nana Howard Thurman, Nana Grin Brooks, and Nana Nanny Barrows. And uh, Nana Howard Thurman said, we are people and must be a people that ride the storm and remain intact. Ride the storm and remain intact. And Nana Gwen Brooks says, we are people who must conduct our blooming in the noise and whip of the whirlwind. And finally, Nana Nanny Barrow said, we are people that do and must specialize in the holy impossible. That's us, that's us, we specialize in a wholly impossible. Uh, Saber, uh, 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 Tulivu, uh, did Hassani leave? Oh, I get Hassani. Saber, Tulivu, Hassani, and then Tanai. I'm gonna do these quick so we can uh, get them all in. Chief, Saki Hassani, Saber Malala, for this excellent present, quantum presentation and the conversation actually that you're having tonight and the scientist you, Professor Ra, for hosting uh, Dr. Karenga to talk about Kwanzaa. Dr. Kringa, something always resonates with me about Kwanzaa when I hear you lecture on Kwanzaa and its importance. And one of the uh, points that resonated with me last night when you did a Kwanzaa presentation was maintaining the beauty, integrity, and expansive meaning of the holiday. And I wanted to ask you, would you review that and talk about its importance that as celebrants of Kwanzaa, how do we hold on to and maintain the beauty of Kwanzaa, the integrity of Kwanzaa, and the expanse of meaning of Kwanzaa. If you would talk about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Appreciate what you said, if I understand correctly. The first thing is the integrity of Kwanzaa, the integrity, beauty, and expanse of meaning. The integrity means that you don't violate, you don't bring things from the European off in there. You don't try to add uh, uh, another principle to the seven principle, just like you wouldn't add another uh, commandment to the 10. You know, there are 10 commandments, so we got to keep that, right? And we can talk about some other things we need to do, but we need to keep the core of what brought millions of people together. Don't let people violate this. This is a good thing, right? So the integrity means keep it in its essential 
and principled meaning. It's laid out. Then you can develop. And we say you can develop anything you want as long as you respect and maintain the integrity, the beauty, and expansive meaning. So the integrity is not whittle away or do things that undermine its particularity, its value, its meaning to us, the millions who have accepted it, okay? So, for example, if you try to introduce some character like Santa Claus in, or if you bring in mistletoe, what is that? Hey, or if you use a Jewish menorah instead of a Kanata. And Microsoft and the internet people, they'll have you buying a, a Jewish menorah, which is really a, a thing that's a, a you. It's always a you, right? And if you get a you, that's a Jewish menorah. It's not a, 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 a Kwanzaa Kinata or candle holder. A menorah is a candle holder. And a lot of them have six or eight, pardon me, seven or eight candle People buy the eight or they draw when they draw. And Microsoft and them, you put that on the Kwanzaa and people use it as a icon or emoji or whatever they call those things. So it just seems to me we got to avoid those kinds of things. We can't bring other things into the holiday. The holiday has been here. This is the 57th year of it. And it didn't need those things. So we can't do those now, right? We have to protect what is ours and what is beautiful and good. That's the integrity. The beauty is you got to go into the celebration good. You can't throw something up the last minute. You can't do plastic. You can't bring in a cigarette lighter and light the candles, right? When that candle lighting is called lifting up the light that lasts. Lift, listen to that. Listening up the light that lasts. What is the light that lasts? It is our moral and spiritual principles. When everything else changes, those remain with us. The Husea says, the sacred text of our ancestors, they say, we're given that which endures in the midst of that which is overthrown. And that which endures, I repeat, is our moral and spiritual values. Seeking and speaking truth, doing and demanding justice, cherishing and challenging our children to do the best, caring for the poor and the vulnerable among us, having a rightful relationship with the environment, constantly re uh, 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 resisting evil, injustice, and oppression, and always, always praising, lifting up, and pursuing the good. Also, the Nguzo Saba, practice unity, Umoja unity, Kuchichagalia, self-determination, Ujima, collective working responsibility, Ujamaa, Cooperative economic, Nia, purpose, Kuumba, creativity, and Imani, faith. Faith in ourselves, in our creator, in our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our grandmothers, and grandfathers, our elders, our youth, our future. Faith in all that makes us beautiful and strong. And faith in the righteousness and victory of our cause. Faith that through hard work, long struggle, and a whole lot of love and understanding. We can again step back on the stage of human history as a free, proud, and productive people. That's okay, what we've got to practice, right? And then the last thing is the expansive meaning. That's why I asked you to ask me the question. Whoever thought all this was in the Kwanzaa? That's the expansive meaning, and we've got to develop that. We can't just do ritual, you know? So anybody can light a candle. Everybody lights candles. Do you know a culture don't light candles? But it's when we light them from our own culture and make them mean something, particular to us. All great messages, I'm telling you, and usually we think of great messages in terms of religion. So we think of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, right? Buddhism, Hinduism, but also Ma'at and Ifa, the original religions of Africa, they all have a particular and universal aspect to it. And Kwanzaa is the same way. It's particular in that it comes from a certain people. Islam comes from a certain people. Christianity comes from a certain people. Islam from the Arab, Christianity from the Palestinian, Judaism from the Jews, Hindus from the Hinduism, Buddhists from the Hindus, right? So guess what? They speak particular to them. It's in their language. Their culture is reflected in it. But guess what? Because there's a universal aspect to it, it speaks to not only who, who that people is, but also to the best of what it means to be human. And those people then all over the world can embrace it. Let's give me if I'm wrong. So the Martian teachings 
that first taught that humans are in the image of God, let's talk, that we have this inherent word and it's called shepesu or dignity. It's borrowed from and built for by the people in the world. So that's central to human rights conversation now, right? But it's Egyptians, African people that develop those concepts. I'm just telling you. So particular and universal. Don't let the universal erase our particularity. Teach. Don't keep asking, can white people celebrate Kwanzaa? First, let's not celebrate it. And the question is not, can white people celebrate Kwanzaa? You're not asking, by the way, for Native Americans or Latinos or Asians. Rescue me if I'm wrong. It says white people. And the question is not, can white people celebrate Kwanzaa? The question is, can they celebrate black people in all our sacredness? all our beautifulness, all our soulfulness. Hey, can they do that? Now, and uh, uh, especially and more important, can you? Mm -hmm. I mean, in more ways than just announcement. You know how people be claiming, right? Claiming is two different things. It's different from doing. Rescue me if I'm wrong. Did I miss something? Did I turn wrong? Hey, we've got to do what's right. And it takes time and effort and sacrifice to do it. Uh, uh, Hassani. Hassani. Santi Timur. And Tanai next. A, what'd you say? Tanai. Hassani didn't Tanai. Okay. But again, Professor Ra. Yeah, Santi. Habarigani, Seven Mile Lana. Good to see you, Hassani. Good, good seeing you too. Where are you uh, at now? In Ecuador? Llevo en Quito, Ecuador. And Jeez. it's like 9,000 uh, with a feet uh, of high mountains. Yes, and um, I had a, I have a beautiful experience uh, giving uh, Kwanzaa presentations. On the twenty sixth, I gave uh, my second Kwanzaa presentation in Peru, and although it was a small group, mm -hmm. I they were receptive. There were new people, yeah. and Jorge's son said, "Thank you yeah. so much." It's not the numbers; people. it's the presence people. of people. Period. So, people. Okay. Thank you, Seba, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. He said, "You know how." how he appreciated that I brought Kwanzaa into Peru. Teach. And so, um, and then uh, today I was with Afro Equatorians and and honestly, I don't know nothing about Ecuador and they were teaching me the dances and it's a group or it's a, a yeah. organization that dances and all that. And they're receptive. What I'm learning is that black Latinos are receptive to learning about their black history. That's right. Because they've been they've been right denied so long, and Kwanzaa is just a. I was talking yesterday when you were speaking, uh, Sir Maulana. I had a, a a brother driving the taxi, and I was translating what you were talking. I was translating to the brother so he can understand what I was, what what you were saying, and he was just like overwhelmed what he had heard. And then you know he's gonna come and pick me up again, and so I'll explain to him more. So. It's like, and then today I was talk. I had a taxi driver too, a, a brother, and mm -hmm. I was telling him about Kwanzaa, and he was listening. So mm -hmm. what I'm getting is a receptivity of Black Latinos trying to learn. I mean, learning their history Jeez. and not knowing that they've been denied of it. And yes. then when they hear it, is such a beautiful. It's just a beauty that they hear, mm -hmm. and it's like they're quiet and listening. You know, and absorbing everything you said and everything I say when yes. I when I present. It's beautiful. Hassan is Hassan. And Hassan has been doing very much a good work for our organization in terms of reaching out to our African, uh, Afro-Latino uh, people, brothers and sisters uh, in different <laughs> countries. She's from Peru. It's a large uh, Black population and so in Ecuador I and mean, in Colombia. And all those places, and certainly in Brazil, you know, we have more Africans in Brazil than uh, anywhere else in, in the world besides the continent. So we're trying to reach them and teach them this and share with them their knowledge, but also learn from them. Like she was talking about the beauty of their culture and dance that they maintain, like Brazilians especially have maintained so much. The Cubanos also uh, have done the same thing, maintain Puerto, Rica, Puerto Ricans. And, and of course we have. I don't put our... Never, never, ever do I put black people in this country on those junior brother and junior social, junior sister status. We also have maintained. Sometimes we don't know it, right? This is what, what we call knowing without knowing, right? We 
we know it, but we don't know we know it. You understand? We 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 okay. We're beautiful people. <laughs> yeah. Uh tonight. Yeah. Aside for the all the work and good you do. And we wish you travel well and arrive well. We look forward to seeing you when you return. Okay. Really, really. Sign to sign. I already have signing. Mm -hmm. Yes, tonight. Barigani, Dr. Kranga. Barigani, tonight. Ujima, Sante Sana, Barigani, Dr. Kranga. Sante Sana, Ujima, Sante Sana, Dr. Kranga. Sante Sana, so much, Dr. Kranga, for creating your philosophy, Kawaita, the Nguzo Saba, and Kwanzaa. It's just a beautiful, beautiful contribution to our people. And, and when, before, you, before you go on, I wanted to say to what Hassani was saying. They were responding to Kwanzaa. But it's the Kawaita, the philosophy of life and work and struggle that informs Kwanzaa that they're responding to, that lifts them up, makes them the subject and center of their own history and culture, and second to none. You see, hey, an equally valid and valuable way of being human in the world. African, black, African. so important. Okay, tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> La, Santi Seba Marlana is so important. Santi Seba Marlana, I wanted to ask you, Seba Marlana, um, the principal Nia mm -hmm. purpose to make our collective vocation, the building and developing of our community in order to restore our people to their traditional greatness. What do you mean when, uh, would you explain, Tafadali, what you're meaning when you say collective vocation? And also, what do you mean by restoring our people to their traditional greatness? What does that look like? It's an excellent, an excellent question. See, this is what we talk to expands in meaning. See, now, collective vocation, that means a calling that we have. You know, people say that vocation, they think mainly of a career, right? And that's good. But there's a career above careers. And that career mm, is to free ourselves and be ourselves, flourish, and come into the fullness of ourselves. Can, can you see that? Coming into the fullness of ourselves, having the conditions and capacity to just flourish, to flower, to grow, right? And to be good and to do good in the world, right? Because Odu Ifai said, let's do things with joy. For surely humans have been divinely chosen to bring good into the world. And this is our fundamental mission and meaning of human life. So that collective vocation is to do good in the world, to do good in the world, right? That's what we are divinely chosen to, to do. And so when I talk about to restore our people to their traditional greatness, I'm talking about doing good. And you know who says us, tells us how to understand this? Is again in the sacred text of the Hosea. It says, the wise are known by their wisdom, but the great are known by their good deeds. So if we're going to make our people great, we've got to do good for them and the world. That's there. So we are great by the good we do. We can have knowledge. We can be technicians and scientists, right? But if we don't do good, if we use our scientific and technology, technological skill to, to spy on people, to kill, to drop bombs on them and wipe them out without any conscience, that's not greatness. That's not greatness, right? But serving the people, saving the people, speaking truth to the people and to power, intervening and defending the poor and the vulnerable against those stronger than them, giving food to the hungry, water to the thirsty, clothes to the naked, and a boat to those without one, to be a father for the orphan, a mother for the timid, a raft for the drowning, and a ladder for those trapped in the pit of despair. That's greatness. That's greatness. Therefore, Nana Mary Clavetun said, serve your people. She said, I'm glad in that I've served. My whole life has been service. That's what made her great. And she said, you should serve in such a way that even when you lie down in death, you stand tall on the platform of service to lie down and still stand tall. What a beautiful culture we have to teach us those kinds of things. Just think about it. And the culture that said, the wise are known by their wisdom. Give them credit. But the great are known by their good deeds. And listen to Nana Martin Luther King, who says to us, everybody can be great because of what? 
Everybody can serve, right? And the sacred Hushia said, serve God that he or she may protect and provide for you. Serve your brothers and sisters and your family so that you can be recognized and respected for it. Serve a wise person so that they can teach you wisdom. Serve, uh, in, serve those who serve you. And serve just so you can benefit from being a servant. And serve your mother and father so you can go forward and prosper. So service has been key to what it means to be great tonight. That's it. Sante Sabre Malana. Sante. Malana, we you got know. we got three more questions and then close out. We're closing uh, out. Okay. And I'll be uh, shorter. Yeah. Okay. Then. So brother, I can lecture on each one of these. <laughs> we, we, we're going to go with Brother Char Dr. Charles Alexander, clinical psychology out of Chicago. Yeah, yes. Go. Good. Barigani. Barigani. Uh, Ujima. Barigani. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think I have two questions. And so, the, so the first is in, in terms of uh, your formulation and the expansion of Kwanzaa and uh, Kuwaitia. Is it, so I, I hear you speaking. Kawaita. Mm -hmm. Kawaita. I hear you speaking a lot uh, about um, Kemet and um what what are some of the other cultural manifestations from the continent that kind of infuse your thoughts about about um, Kwanzaa? And and then the second question is, if you had ever had conversations with uh, Kobe Cambone and his in '92, I think it was that he introduced his concept of psychological misorientation and he stated that that was like our fundamental mental illness because it it kind of posited our tendency because of the onslaught of white supremacy that our point of reference is off it's not an african point of reference and so i know that kwanzaa predates his work but i was just wondering if 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 by chance, the two of you had ever had any conversations where, you know, it, you know, the two of you just kind of spoke to how something as a system such as uh, Kawita can help us to reconcile that psychological misorientation. Hmm. Well, appreciate what you said. If I understand correctly, yes, certainly. I, I know uh, 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 Dr. Campbell, and I, 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 I wanted to. Uh, let you know that he's in my book, Introduction to Black Studies, as one of the major thinkers in psychology and in the radical psychology. I divided psychology into three kinds, reformist, uh, 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 what I say, traditional reformist and radical. And so I, I think it's important. And I think if you remember now, I have argued that the struggle for freedom is a struggle to be ourselves and to free ourselves. And it's to be our African selves. And it is to, as Dr. Malefi Asante said, locate ourselves correctly, right? To speak, as we used to say, from a black position. That's what we first said. And uh, and Asante, Dr. Asante always says he 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 developed his Afrocentricity out of Kawaita, studying Kawaita. So that's an issue. That 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 that's a very important point for us to see that we developed, I developed Kawaita as an Afrocentric initiative before the word was given. And mm -hmm. I said that the key crisis in Black culture, pardon me, the key crisis in Black life is a culture crisis. And the culture crisis revolves around how we break the monopoly that the oppressor has on so many of our minds, reach inside ourselves, develop ourselves, and come into the fullness of ourselves and build a whole new world. And so what I don't want us to do is to stay with the psychological. I want us to use the psychology as a path to practice for in the final analysis, right? Every principle, every proposition for it to be real and relevant to our life must eventually end in practice. A transformative practice of ourselves, what probably a transformative practice for ourselves, for society, and the world, making it as the fifth 
principle of Kawita says, and the fifth principle of Kwanzaa says, making it more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. It's from the ancient Egyptian concept, Sarutta. And also, you know, when I first started, I did a sweep, ancient Egyptian Yoruba, but we focus a lot on Nkulu and Kulu, and I don't have time to go on that, but we chose Zulu culture to focus on because it was a military culture, and we were in a struggle, and we thought we could learn a lot from that. But I learned and studied from many cultures to create the Kwanzaa and also to create my uh, philosophy of Kawaida. And I define Kawaida as an ongoing synthesis of the best of African sensibilities, thought, and practice in constant exchange with the world. So it has an open texture to it and willing to continue to learn and to absorb what? The best of African culture. And we said we got to constantly dialogue with African culture, asking it questions and seeking from it <clears throat> answers to the fundamental issues facing African people and the world. And that we have to develop all of our activity toward African and human good and the well-being of the world and all in it. So that's how I deal with that. So I certainly appreciate all the Black psychologists and uh, the conversation they had. Certainly Dr. Naima Akbar and psychological, uh, the change of psychological enslavement or slavery. All those are important for us to understand ourselves. And certainly uh, Nana Bobby Wright, who was so uh, important in terms of the psychological disorientation uh, uh, of uh, not only us, but of the European and uh, the oppressor who got some serious issues, right? He's trying to work out. So this a psychopathic personality. Psychopathic personalities. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, say it again, sir. I'm sorry. Psychopathic personality. That's right. That's right. That's right. Psychopathic personality. Yeah. So I think that's very important for us. All those contributions are important for us. And so I still want us to get to the positive, though. I don't want us to see ourselves as just sick, pathological, and we end up just talking pathological conversation about black people. I want us to move toward what uh, Dr. Lynn Demise calls the optimality. You know, we what is what are we in our option yes, in our know. optimal situation? I want us to talk like that because that's what we do in Kawaida, right? We ask, how can we come into the fullness of ourselves? That's positive. It doesn't just always find the black people defective. That's what the European, this is a pathological, pardon me, this is a society that is sick and it is both pathological and pathogenic. Pathological means it's sick. Pathogenic means it creates sickness in itself and others, right? And so we have to break away from this, right? Oppression itself is a pathology. There's something sick about a people that hate you, enslave you, kill you without conscious Hey, and you haven't done anything to her. That's why Anana C.T. Vivian asked the white boy uh, down there trying to stop them from voting, just knocking them around. He said, what kind of people are y'all? What kind of people? Right? So it's not us that are pathological. It's these people that are pathological. Our oppressor is pathological, and he's creating a pathogenic society that makes us act sometimes. Not all of us. Some of us act other. Those of us who are here, we're not acting. Wow. We're acting the way we should. But sometimes, you know, let, let me tell you this. This, You know, I do the psychology, too. I, I, it's important for us to, in Black study to have some grounding in several fields, but not claim we know all of it. And we turn to the experts when we get to it. My field is ethics, social ethics and political science. That's what I have my two doctorates in. One in the first one in political science, the second doctorate in social ethics, because I believe Every question we deal with eventually comes to ethics. How we relate to our children, how we relate to the environment, how we do our work, how we wage our struggle, and how we live our lives, right? So I'm just saying that we said, let's heal and repair the world in the process of in, uh, repairing ourselves. And I want to introduce here what I call uh, Dr. Alexander, Black people as injured physicians, right? I don't deny that we're wounded. But that's not all we are. We are also agents of our own life and liberation, right? Self-conscious agents. That's what we're trying to get our people to become, self-conscious agents of our own life and liberation. Because there's no substitute, no substitute for an aware, organized, and engaged people 
constantly involved in a multiplicity of activities to define, defend, and advance their interests. So we want them to be that. And there's a concept in ancient Egypt called Sarujta, an ethical concept, which says repair, renew, and remake the world. And we add to that in the process and practice of repairing, renewing, and remaking ourselves. For it's not a Mary McLeod, Dr. Mary McLeod Batum said to us, our task is to remake the world. It is nothing less than this. I believe that because we are world historical people. I've said this before, I say it again. In Swahili, we got two words for human being. Watu, which is simple human being, but Walingwengo, which means world being. So we're both human beings and world beings. And we must, in fact, <laughs> deal with the whole idea of thinking about not only our future, but our future in the world mm -hmm. and with the world. Uh, 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 Professor Rao, who you want me to take next? Uh, uh, DX. Uh, DX. DX. Brother DX. Brother, Brother DX. DX. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be, I said uh, I'm going to be shorter, but I see. I, I'm not. Right. <laughs> Professor Rao. Yes, the Barakani yes. Ujima. Oh, hold up, Brother DX. We want to make sure we give uh, Professor J.I.E. in also. Okay. He, he right. sent her hand up for a while. Okay, okay, he go he go after Diet. If that's okay. Yeah. Ladies first. It don't matter. It's all, all right. She... Okay. Dr. <laughs> Ife, right. Ife, Dr. Yes. Uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Uh it's a pleasure to be able to greet you. Uh Habari Ghani Baba. Ujima. I grew up... Ghani. Yes, I grew up taking Kiswahili classes with you and your lovely family at Crenshaw High School, and it's a pleasure. Right. And the honor. Oh, yeah. I used to take you uh, field trips to the Us Center with my father, Leslie Muhammad. He was a professor at Washington High School. I wanted to ask you this particular question because I've grown up celebrating nothing but Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. I don't know no different. And as I continue to harness the power of it, I've grown also as an EFI practitioner. And there's a moment where if you celebrate Kwanzaa right, it leaves every book in that, brother. brother. <laughs> I'm going to have to give you my book. <laughs> People think I'm publishing that in the back of my car. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said to I'm, I'm, Yes, no worry. At the table. It's okay. <laughs> no worry, no worry. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would like to, to, to pick your brain about your recommendations, because mm -hmm. if we celebrate Kwanzaa right, it leaves our people with a very strong sense of just empowerment, of love, of possibility. And I know that as an EFI practitioner, there's also a moment of us uh, reclaiming our spiritual identity. Dr. Marimba Ani talks about this very heavily in her work. What are some of your recommendations on harnessing the power of Kwanzaa and coupling it with some of the uh, African spiritual traditions that our, our people are now being open to practicing? Well, present what you said, if I understand correctly, we can do that if we don't start talking religion instead of culture. I borrow from and build on the ethical and spiritual traditions. You've heard me quote from the sacred text, so it's already in there. But I never advocate a faith. That's for people to be. One of the things that scared people when we first started was we were so critical of the white versions of Christianity. It was like we didn't give it no break, right? And, but it helped to also create a new conversation called Black Liberation Theology, right? So the movement helped to create that. And I think that that's a, a, a religion freed from white supremacist images, interests, and ideas, right? So I don't want Kwanzaa to be a religious holiday. I want it to be a culture holiday. And it's broad enough. African culture is broad enough, deep enough, right? Inclusive enough, right? Insightful enough to include all the traditions so that Christians, Muslim, Black Jew, Black Hebrew, uh, Black Buddhists, Black uh, Hindus, et cetera, and the people who follow the original traditions of Africa, Maat, uh, Ifa, Dogon, the rest of them, right? They all can celebrate because they come together on what? Not that different understandings of their spirituality, but on the basis of being African and being mm, central as a moral and social vanguard. So we can talk ethics, but we must not give it 
those different names when we come together, unless we've already agreed on that. I want us to keep Kwanzaa as a cultural holiday. That's how it thrives, so that all the faiths can come and celebrate themselves as Africans, as Black people, sacred people. No one more chosen, no history more holy than our own, no narrative more worthy of being taught and told than our own. Mm -hmm. That's so key. That's so key. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Asante, my love. Asante. Brother DX? Yes, give thanks. Man, give thanks. This is indeed an honor. Abaragani, everybody. Ujima. Ujima. Yes. Mm. Abaragani. That's what, um, man, I, I want to say, like, my family has been uh, practicing Kwanzaa principles uh, for about maybe 18 years now. <laughs> and, um, I just want to testify to the the commitment that my family has made just to have those seven days and you know coming together. It mm -hmm. has allowed us to formulate businesses, you know what I mean, coming up with ideas, strategies, and you know, aside from some of the family disputes, the days of Kwanzaa is like all oh, that is kind of set aside because we're not doing you know the traditional Christmases and this and that. And, you know, so I just want to testify that, you know, what Kwanzaa has done for my family and, uh, you know, just the commitment that we made to be together those seven days one way or another. Even this year, we all in different places, but we still get on the phone and, you know, um, still go through the principles. My mom likes candles, you know what I mean? So thank you very much. And, you know, what I'm saying for all your, you know, dedication and work and, you know, it's made a difference in, you know, my life and my family. So thank you very much. And also my question, um, cause I, I, you know, what introduced me to Kwanzaa and what attracted me to it was the, the fact that it was seven principles and, you know, it's, you know, for me, I'm a hermetic principalist. So those seven principles, you know what I'm saying, how they coincide, you know, you got seven chakras, you got the seven days of creation and all these different things. Is that, is it, was that a significant reason why you chose seven principles as opposed, you know, and then you added, you know, about Kawita being a native energy, you know what I'm saying, like Muskogee or, you know, Choctaw or something to that nature. Is that related back to, you know, that indigenous part of us as well? Like, that's a real true connection, like, you know, having our indigenous, you know, um, for those who was on the west of the Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? Like that energy being introduced as, you know, through an African principle, because, you know, we all had the same villages, same, you know, culture in that way. So I'm just curious, like with the seven and then bringing in the Kawita, that connection through spirituality. Gibo, appreciate what you said and asked uh, uh, Brother DX. If I understand you correctly, certainly seven has a significant, a spiritual significance in Africa. Now, and I understood that. And also I'm the seventh son and the 14th child born in the seventh month on the second, seventh in the month. So people around me, my family and the elders always said to me, you're going to do something important and I want you to do good for the race. We used to talk race all the time. We say for the race. And we have said in six is on the case for the race. You know, we got to be on the case for the race. So, yeah, seven has an important meaning for our people, my family. And so, yes, I did the seven with that in mind. But I also was reinforced in that by modeling after seven day holiday in Africa called Umkosi among the Zulus. Remember I told you I studied Zulu culture a lot. I studied a lot of them culture, but Zulu culture had this seven-day holiday. And I said, it's a first fruit holiday. And I say, oh, that's good. Because remember now, I created Kwanzaa to introduce these, these values, these, this black value system called the Nguzo Saba, which is Swahili for seven principles. Nguzo is pillar or principle, and Saba is seven. So the seven principles, Nguzo Saba. So I created that for that. And Kawit is my philosophy. Uh, Brother D, I created Kwanzaa and and um, the Nguzo Saba out of 
my philosophy, which I said is an ongoing sentence. It's constantly being built out of how I study. I do intellectual work. That's why we don't say I invented Kwanzaa. I didn't. I, I created it out of long research, deep thinking, and with the will to advance the Black struggle, return Black people to their culture, give us a Pan-African site for coming together and meditating on the awesome meaning of being African in the world, and to introduce these communitarian values. So Kwanzaa, uh, pardon me, Kawaita is a philosophy of life, work, and struggle. How we live our lives, how we do our work, and how we wage the struggle to be ourselves and to free ourselves and with other oppressed and progressive people, build a whole new world and a new hope for humankind, a new history and a new hope for humankind. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I saw that. And so I want to say thanks. And I want to close out by saying, remember this, that <clears throat> this is our duty to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive ways. And this too, Black people, our ancestors and elders tell us, continue the struggle, keep the faith, hold the line, love and respect our people and each other. Practice the Nguzo Saba, the seven principles, seek and speak truth, do and demand justice. Be constantly concerned with the well-being of the world and all in it, and dare help rebuild the overarching movement that prefigures and makes possible the good world we all want and deserve and want to leave as a legacy worthy of the name and history African. Happy Kwanzaa. Head is that Kwanzaa. Asante, Mala. Asante, Mala. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, uh, Brother Hembrick, my co-host, uh, historian Hendrick, uh, did you have a closing statement or, or just uh, a, a appreciation from Dr. Pranger being on the show? Uh, yes, sir. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. I'm a good, I was a good friend of, of uh, uh, Kaleem Akil. Teach. Oh, That's okay. Tulevo's brother. That's his brother's own. Yeah, Tulevo, we all here. Yeah, mm -hmm. may, the, may the joy he brought and the good he left last forever. And may all his family and friends be blessed with consolation, cares, and peace. For surely he has risen in radiance in the heaven and now sits in the sacred circle of the ancestors among the doers of good, the righteous, and the rightfully rewarded. Hotel, I see. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had a quick question. Uh, you know, you mentioned the Husi and uh, and, uh, and uh, oh, do we find? philosophy and the stuff that you you know, came up with. My question is, you know, I'm a I'm a historian by trade, so I like to yes, read. Sir. So I wanted to know, can you name any of those reference materials that you use as you were developing your philosophy or whatnot? Oh yes, of course. I, I developed the, the philosophy out of the major thinkers of our time, uh, and and also the ones before, like so Haji Malcolm X, uh, Fran, uh, Nana. Uh, France Renown, Nana Grammy Nkrumah, uh, uh, Nana Amilka Cabral, um, uh, Nana Julius Nyerere, uh, people like that. And then on the home front, uh, Nana W.B. Du Bois, and later Nana Fannie Lou Hamer, Nana Anna Julia Cooper, um, uh, Nana uh, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, uh, uh, Nana Harry Tubman was one of my favorites, and I developed out of her in terms of struggle and her concept that uh, freedom is indivisible. But she turned back. She refused to go forward by herself. And in that moment, she redefined freedom from individual escape to the collective practice of self-determination in and for community. So those are some of the um, works I wrote. Uh, about. And then when, later on, when I began to study uh, ancient Egypt, I read the original text and the hieroglyphs. And I read uh, 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 Pataltep, Aminamope, Kagemni, Anche Shoki, Pebhor, the rest of them, you know. I read the Decoration of Virtue. I read the book of Coming Forth by Day. Uh, I did I did an 800-page uh, dissertation for my second doctor uh, uh, on Ma'at, the moral idea of ancient Egypt, a study in classical African ethics. So I, it's a whole, it's like 
20, 30 pages of references in the end of my book, if you want to know what I did there. And then your I did the same thing. So I th that's essentially what I uh, did. I don't want to go on like that's a, it's not uh, 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 brother Rasha Key. Uh, 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 we're going to close out. I just want to say again, Malana, Asante sign for all you've done for me, my family, as well as for our people. I bear witness, being a student of Kawita for over 40 years. And the reason you study Kawita so long is because it's a constant exchange with the world. Mm -hmm. And it's expansive. You grow and you make progressive corrections and development. But you practice it. And that's the practice of the best of African thought and practices. And I just want to say, Sante San for that that philosophy. Sante San for the... Um, um, uh, uh, in Guzo Saba, the seven principles, and Operation Unity, which we use to form in uh, LA in Buff, as well as other organizations use your uh, your presentation of Operation Introduction to Operation Unity, Unity with Diversity and Unity without Uniformity, Principles of Cooperation, Principles of Why You Come in Together, Purpose, Direction, all of those things are deep, and I just want to let everybody know that this you don't. This is this is you all the time. Ever since I've known you, you've always been the same person. Me, me and M. C. J. know that and bear witness to that. And uh, and so I mean that's the beauty of if anybody get around you, you gotta get around. You. And you you can't just learn Kawi by just in the book. You got to study, practice, and come to the center and see other people practicing it. This is why we, when we greet each other, we put our hands on our heart because we say it's heartfelt. And we don't use no profanity, no arguing. It's best to lose the person rather than the point, as Dr. Karenga T. Best so to I want lose to thank you for all your beautiful it's, teachings. That's why, but why, you mean yeah. it's better to lose the point than the person? Yes, that's yes. it. <laughs> keep, my, keep, my, the person, keep the person you can eventually make the point. Lose yeah. the person, you never make the point. There it is. Uh, <laughs> Rasha Key, let's close us out. With the, who's going to be on next Wednesday? Oh, we got Brother Chihuahua on here. He's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brother Chihuahua, tell us that title real quick. Yes, this will be a title called New Faculty of Thinking um, Black the Black Authority. Right. You know, we shall be discussing something to do with um, Black on Black integration versus Black on Black crime. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll discuss that. All right, brother. Can I, can I ask Brother Chihuahua a question? Yeah, well, my mom. Have we ever heard of white on white crime? When no. We, when we racialize crime, we criminalize the race. And if we criminalize the race, we can kill them off with justification. Exactly. So we have to watch out saying crime is black. Crime mm -hmm. is not black. It's American. It's the mm -hmm. white. Well, I don't want to I don't scare you. I don't want to <laughs> end on a bad note with Kwanzaa. Uh, happy Kwanzaa. Thank you. You know what I mean? Right. Right. You know? Asante to everybody. We want to say Asante to uh, Brother Kumba out of Denver, Brother Omar Montgomery Kumba, and all my sons that were on, my my daughter Shakiba, and all of them, and Shahi, <laughs> all of them are on, and uh, Brother Rodney. Uh, uh, Ronnie Roberts, my strong friend I, in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. teacher at Long Beach Poly and strong brother, and everybody, and especially the organization, us members, the Saber Tulevu, uh, Sister Tanaya, who is uh, the uh, principal of uh, uh, Lumbinko School uh, that we have at the Culture Center, mm -hmm. as well as Brother M. Shema in I think, I don't know, you know, one of the founders of the US organization with Dr. Karenga. And next time we're going to talk about that. Samaji. Samaji. Brother Samaji. Asante Sana, everyone. Thank you all for coming in. It went longer than we thought, but we have very special guests and a very special conversation. There'll be one of the ones that we, uh, and if you want to see it again, I think we're going to put it on YouTube. And so that uh, other, if you have friends that didn't get a chance to listen, 
that can go to uh, uh, Community Education Network on YouTube and it'll be in our archives of, of, of presentations. Asante Sana, my Brother Ryan and Sister Hassani from the organization us. And, and Sister Hassani, all the organization us <laughs> members. Jeez. My brothers and sisters. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. Stay strong. Yeah, Asante again, my Ryan, as you teach us the grains of sand of few compared to the many thanks we offer you for your <laughs> presentation <laughs> In your contribution to our Black Liberation Movement Asante and Sana. the organization, us. Asante, Sana. Asante Sana. Yeah, well, two times. Sana.